Today I'm going to show you how using grids on your light modifiers can be a powerful tool when shooting with gels. Lindsay Adler here, and if you know my work and you know my tutorials, you know that I love gels. I love super saturated color, rich light, beautiful color harmonies. I love telling a story with my light. In fact, my tutorial, The Magic of Gels, goes in depth on my approach and my favorite techniques with working with color gels. Today, I'd like to take you into a virtual studio. And in the virtual studio, I wanna show you my insider's tip of why I find using grids so powerful when I'm trying to control the placement and the saturation of my gels. So with that, let's take a look. So here we are in our virtual studio, and I'm going to begin with a really simple and essential two light setup. And so in this case, what I'm using as my main light is a white beauty dish off to the right hand side here. And so you can see its placement creates some sculpting on the face, a little bit of drama, a little bit of shadows, but overall uh, pretty nice even illumination. And then what I'm going to do is add my kicker light or my rim light. And notice how it's illuminating the side of her face and her body. So this is a pretty standard essential setup, but what we're focused on today is we wanna see what happens when we add grids and specifically when we're adding grids to control the spill of light when using gels. So let's talk about this. Um, when I add grids to the scene, there are many different reasons, but fundamentally what I'm using grids for is to control the spread of light. So without a grid, the light might be kind of spilling everywhere on the background, maybe hitting the ceiling down the subject's body. When I add a grid, I can restrict that. So let's actually take a look at what's happening. Uh, let's first add a grid to our beauty dish. And so I'm going to add a grid and you'll see a slight change. So here's before and here's after. So what you'll see is that the bottom part of the body gets a little darker because the light is restricted, it's narrowed, so less reaches down the body. And you'll also notice that the background got just a bit darker. So in addition to narrowing the spread, it also makes it act as if the light is falling off faster, less light will reach the background. So there was a subtle change there. But now let's actually add a grid to our rim light, our strip softbox. And so I'm gonna pop over here, add a grid, and watch the difference. All of a sudden, the background became completely black. So why is that? Well, uh, beforehand, without the grid, you can actually see that the light is spreading out. It's kicking to the left, to the right, to the top. And what's happening is some of the light is hitting the ceiling, which bounces down and lights that background. And also some of the light is kicking over and illuminating the background from the side. And so by adding a grid, what's going to happen is we restrict the spill of light. And so the picture becomes much more dramatic and also uh, our light becomes much more controlled. So grids, they're really important, especially when you're working in small spaces, if the light is going where you don't intend it, intend it to, if the light is bouncing on places and surfaces you don't intend it to. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those grids and we're going to take a look at what happens when we add gels and then we'll add grids back into the equation. So let me just go back to where we began. Okay, so... No grids at all. All right, I think the color combination I wanna go for here is maybe I wanna do like a, let's do a magenta main light. And what you'll notice is when I add a magenta gel to our main light, to our beauty dish, uh, it illuminates her nicely, but you'll also notice that the background, it's a little bit washed out. Uh, there's some pink reaching it, not too much, but it also looks a little bit gray. And I know from experience that this is caused by light spilling on the background, and what it does, it dilutes the color, right? It's white light that is kind of washing out that pink. Now, in my tutorial, The Magic of Gels, I talk about this much more in depth and how you can uh, think of light like water and that gels show up most in shadow areas. So if you wanna learn more about that, be sure to check out the tutorial. So taking a look here, I see that that white is really, really washing out the pink on the background. So what happens if I add a grid to this rim light? Okay, look at the difference there. Just by adding a grid to that strip softbox, it prevents the light from spilling quite as much so it doesn't hit the background and all of a sudden, that background, it's really looking much more saturated. The pink from the main light, which has no grid, right? It's just the beauty dish, is hitting the subject as well as the background. Let's actually make this a little bit more complicated and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a gel to our rim light, to our strip softbox. Let's go with, um, let's see, let's actually go with a dark blue. 
All right, so right now, here's the situation. I have a grid only on our strip softbox, only on our rim light, as well as a blue gel. And so you can see it gives that kiss of light to the left-hand side of the body. Our main light has no grid, so it spreads out freely. It hits the background and the subject. Okay, so what do you think would happen if I come over here to our beauty dish and I add a grid? Well, we already know that it restricts the spread of light. Less light will hit further down the subject as well as less light hitting the background. So what does that mean to the equation? Well, let's take a look. When I add the grid, notice how the background becomes almost black. And the reason being is we've restricted that spread of light. So neither the strip softbox or the beauty dish are going to be hitting the background, which means the background will appear black. All right, so originally we had the magenta hitting the background. Now we have neither light. What happens if I'm looking at this and I think, well, I would like to have a little bit of color on the background, but I don't want to add another light and I didn't like the pink. Well, guess what? You can actually make the strip softbox hit the background, but you're going to have to remove that grid. So I'm going to go back, remove the grid and notice how now the light is spreading a little bit more. It is a rim light on the subject, but also a little bit of it bounced off the ceiling, a little bit kicked out to the side and you've got a subtle blue in the background. I actually really like that, but let's say you wanted the background to be even more blue. What you can do is you can feather the light and feathering the light means you change the angle. So I can take the strip softbox and I can actually point it a little bit more towards that background and the background will become a little bit brighter, a little bit more saturated of blue. So notice here in just a couple of quick changes, whether I had a gel, whether I gridded the main light or just the rim light or both, it made a drastic difference. So when I am using gels, I often use grids because it allows me to control the spill of light and then I can decide where the color is going to show up instead of just hoping that the color is going to be saturated in the places that I intend. I hope you now have a better understanding of how something as simple as popping a grid onto a modifier can completely change the look of your shot. And this is specifically, especially true with color gel photography. Now, if you'd like to learn more about gels, I recommend that you check out my tutorial, The Magic of Gels. I've got three hours of video content and 35 lighting setups in a companion guide. Be sure to stay tuned to this channel for more lighting tips and tricks. I'll see you next time.